I was talking to people, and the, this question came up a number of times, and I'm going to ask you, which is, why does GE, what is its reason for being any longer? And it goes to this idea that this conglomeration of different businesses, which there used to seemingly be a strong case for in some ways, doesn't seem to have that anymore. Yeah. So why is, or what is GE's reason for being, for lack of a better term? Listen, David, I'd answer this two ways. If you go back 125 years, the company itself has always combined incredible technology, incredible innovation, uh, execution rigor, unbelievable global reach in a number of industries that have created amazing technology developments, outcomes for customers, affected the lives of billions of people around the world. And the company has a special role in the world and who we are, uh, how we matter in the world, that's not really the issue for the company right now. What matters is the execution and the results and how we deliver is the core issue that I'm focused on. With respect to this question about the business units and, and how they fit together, a couple of thoughts. One is there's a significant amount of synergy uh, in the things that you shouldn't throw away lightly around uh, central research, leveraging technology from one business to another, uh, common back office operations, brand, global footprints, et cetera. So there's real value created in the companies being together. That said, we have to prove day in, day out that that format is optimal. I look at that all the time. We have to show that we're spending a certain amount of money to, to be at a central level, and that creates value in the business units. I look at that all the time. So um, there are big things like digital and additive. These are massive game-changing investments that we're amortizing over a large portfolio. So if you were trying to do those case by case, healthcare was an example for me. If I was trying to do that on my own, not on the backs of GE, that would be a massive debilitating investment for that business unit. So I don't reject all the benefits out of hand. At the same time, we have to be rational about the form and structure of the company, and I'm open to that, as we said this right, morning. Well, you know the, the argument that you'll get from some, at least. And by the way, some of the parts, let's just throw that out. But just the simple yeah. idea that separating businesses out gives them a greater focus to a certain extent yeah. when they are competing against their peers. I mean, do you believe that to be the case? Has the focus not that been certainly there as can, much? It, that certainly can be the case. We want to simplify the portfolio, so we went through that this morning. And then we want to run the, you know, you don't have to separate things to run them better. You don't have to have a separated company to have focus and intensity and work on cash and work on cost and work on margin. So I don't accept the theory that the only way to create that is to separate pieces. So I understand that theory. I understand your question. We can make the company better right now and still have all the optionality to do whatever we want. So are you committed to side. that idea or are you willing to challenge it as well as you continue committed to this which review? Idea. The idea that GE should remain together essentially as a conglomeration of these different businesses because there is a benefit I'm, I'm open from to, it. I, I'm committed to improving the operations of the company and then moving forward from there to whatever optionality makes sense for the owners of the company. So I'm not wed to the current format. If you look at the company over 100 years, We've looked different at different points in time. We've been in different industries. You know that in the last 10 or 20 years, a lot sure. of that. So I'm not wed to any current format. I am wed to running the company incredibly well and then moving forward from there to the right things for investors. So we'll see that as these come by. Well, when you say in your prepared remarks, we will have a simpler, more focused sure. portfolio. What does that yeah. mean? So we, what we announced this morning is $20 billion of uh, divestment uh, asset value. Of, of, so we've got a lot of businesses, too many businesses that take time and management resources away that don't have a really a prospect for a large uh, substantial reward. So there's going to be, I'd say, a simplification and a uh, reduction in the number of businesses that we have broadly in the company, tier two, tier three P&Ls. Okay, but and people should not necessarily take that as a meaning that you're going to split things apart in a, in a more meaningful way. I mean, not the 20 billion is not a significant yeah, 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 yeah. sum. Well, we said we'll continue to evaluate this. And I think, you know, for my uh, management philosophy and financial philosophy, you have to look at this all the time, you know, and it's not a question for October or November or December. It's an ongoing question about where are returns, where can we invest, where are we competitive, what other formats might unlock value. So I'm open to doing that over time. But the first port of call is we have to run the company better. That I control, we control, and that's what we owe as the stewards of the company first and foremost. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.